Galileo showed that the natural path of projectile motion is a parabola. Can you see the parabolic shape in the following phenomena? We're proud to have acrobats like these in our circuit. This girl and her brother are loaded just like human bullets into the barrel of the cannon. Watch for them. Look out, here they come. Now our big show is over. How many instances of projectile motion do you see in this clip? Why are some parabolas bigger than others? It's about the speed. A slower projectile will not go as far. A faster projectile will go further. If we throw horizontally, we get half a parabola. Again, a faster projectile will go further than a slower projectile. The horizontal distance that the projectile travels is called the range. This is your apparatus. You will roll a ball down a curved track. The higher up the track you start, the faster the speed will be. The two things that you measure then are the height from which you release the ball and the range, how far the ball goes before it hits the ground. Do you measure to the top or the bottom of the ball? Hey, this ruler doesn't start at zero. Is that going to be a problem? You use carbon paper to record where the ball hits. Each dot is labeled one, two, three, etc. The position of each dot is measured in the cluster. Record your data in an Excel spreadsheet. The first column is the height from which the ball was released. The five green columns show the measurements of the range for five repetitions at the same height. You take an average of those five repetitions. That's in the blue. The uncertainty of that average is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of trials. In this case, there are five trials. Let's make a graph. Now, this is actually an older version of Excel, so the instructions will be a little bit different for yours. Okay, first I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select the first column. All right. Then I'm going to hold down Control and select the average range column. Now I'm going to go up to Insert and choose Graph. There's a bunch of icons here. You choose the Scatter Graph, the No Frills one. And here you can see I've got a nice plot of the range versus the released height. Let's clean it up. I don't need that. Get rid of that. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's talk about how you would analyze a graph. Now, these points here, which I've made up, look pretty much like a line. Let's see if a line would describe it. Right click on a data point, say add trend line. It defaulted to linear. Let's click on these last two options to give us the equation. And the label is pretty small here, so let's, let's make that bigger. All right, now if you look at this qualitative, you can see that it is a pretty good line. There is a little tiny deviation from the line for the points. It's a little below here and here, a little above here in the middle. Now, how do I evaluate how good a fit that is? Well, the R squared value here uh, gives you a, a rule of thumb here. If R squared is close to one, then it's a pretty good fit. If R squared gets down to something like 0.7, 
it's not very good at all. And zero means it's a terrible fit. All right, so that seems like a pretty good fit, but let me try another model. I'm going to right click again, and I'm gonna say add trend line, and this time I'm gonna make it a power model. I'm still gonna give, uh, click both of the options here. And let's magnify that label as well so we can get a good look at it. Now, if you look here, you see that curve line maybe fits a little bit better. And indeed, the R squared is slightly bigger than the R squared of the linear fit. So probably I would say that the power fit is a little better model in this case. Remember, what goes up must come down.